So let's uh, right on time too. I like it. Joining us now here on MMA Junkie Radio is UFC featherweight Calvin Cater. What's up, Calvin? How are you doing? What's up, boys? Good. How are you doing? I'm trying to get this thing situated here, but we're good. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe right in here. <laughs> Actually, he, when he's up close, he looks good. Now take a step back. You look like a FBI informant. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> So standing in close then, right? I think so, yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll be all right. Doesn't it almost look like he's already on Fight Island? It does. Yeah, where are you? <laughs> you a nice backyard. Is that your house? Um, yeah, mentally preparing right now, getting in my, my uh, Fight Island zone. Uh, I like where your head's at. Is that your pad? Uh, no, this is my mother's right here. I'm over here in Haverhill, getting ready for the next session. Oh, Okay. All right, yeah, a little, little bit of flowers. I'm not a big flower. You know, flowers are nice, but I don't plant them. So she's uh, she got a whole bunch of Buddhas back here, uh, flowers, peace signs, and I still manage to find myself fighting in a cage with all that love and support around me. What about when it comes to the ladies? Uh, you know, throughout your life, were you a flowers guy or, or Mother's Day? Do you bring her flowers? I was a food guy, you know, take take everybody out to eat. This way I get a good meal out of the deal, too. Hey, this guy's always... Can't, can't eat flowers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I heard I, there's a new steakhouse in town, but I like salads. Well, let's try the steak. I'm sure mm -hmm. they have salads. Yeah. I like you, Calvin Cater. You, you learn a lot about a girl when you take her out to eat, whether she orders the salad or the, or the chicken parm. <laughs> nice. Okay, so... Yesterday, in fact, I think Goes was trying to book you before yesterday's news, but yesterday's news makes it even better. You will be fighting Dan Ige in the headliner bout on July 15th out at Fight Island. Congrats. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Talk about good timing. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, five rounds. So you headlined before, but that wasn't five rounds, correct? So this will be this one will be five rounds? I, I mean, that's kind of automatic at this point, on right? Paper, on, on paper, but um, yeah, hoping to get in and out of there, man. Hoping to get in and out of there. Uh, happy to get another headline opportunity. Uh, I felt like, you know, I deserve more big moment opportunities. That's I wanted to earn more of them, and I felt like uh, with that win over Jeremy, we did that, and here we go. We got Fight Island, main event. Couldn't be happier. Now I just got to go and uh, capitalize, get the job done. Okay. So, uh, which one of us should piss him off right now, you or me? Uh, you. <laughs> okay. Dude, how did you not get 50 grand for that elbow? And does it just eat up at your side all the time? I mean, uh, I thought uh, the Lamas one was pretty close, too, man. I, I feel like I'm due, I, you know? It's tough to land those big elbows. It's, uh, it's uh, You would think, you know, if that's not it, then what is? But... At the end of the day, man, I can't control that stuff. I can just focus on the things I can, and maybe they didn't made up for it by giving me this main event here, you know? That's a good point, man. Before before we started today with you, we were talking about – I threw out Sports Center and how every once in a while in baseball you'll see a terrific catch, and I don't like when it's the top play of the day because it happens a lot. It happens in yeah, all the games. Exactly. That's what separates your elbow is it doesn't happen that often, so that's exactly. why – you should have got it. Um, okay, but let me ask you that. I mean, that's, you guys were in charge of the bonuses. You would have got it, my friend. <laughs> that's life changing money, man. And yeah. I know that you can't really focus too much on it afterwards. Uh, you just want to get out of your, your system. But going in, when they give you a name like Dan Ige, I mean, that's a dude that doesn't stop. He comes forward the whole time. It's your fighting style as well. You like to be aggressive. Does that kind of pop into your head at all? That bonus, that the fact that. That's got fight of the night written all over it, isn't it? And you're you're at that top spot now where people say, hey, the guys closer to the top usually do get those type of bonuses. Yeah, that's what they say. Um, you know, but like you mentioned, that last fight with Jeremy Stevens, I'm pretty sure that was like my show money too. So it, it just goes to show you how much uh, you know a bonus can can help you out, especially as you're coming up, man. That one I got at the TD Garden. That was more than all of my my fight money put together. You know, I think I was getting like fourteen and fourteen at the time. So, definitely helps out a ton. Uh, but it's it's not something I focus on pre-fight. That's just post-fight. It's fun to you know shoot the shit with you guys and, and talk shit about uh, who should have got it, this and that. But by no means do I even think, even with a guy like Jeremy. Which, by the way, I think shit. Now that we're talking about it, um, 
I don't even know if he would have been eligible to bonus for fight of the night, right? So I might have came away with a cool hundred on that fight yeah. night. Tony and uh, and and Justin just doing what they do, being animals, getting fight of the night. But um, and that's all fine. Kind of that happening. And that's fine. They did deserve that hundred yeah. grand. Now Justin's the one that doubled up. And Ganu got the other fifty. So there's your yeah. four fifty thousand dollar bonuses. It's and I just ain't saying nothing to Ganu, man. So <laughs> yeah, we're, that where it's at. we're all good there. He can keep his money, but but <laughs> Justin, I with Naganu. <laughs> <laughs> Justin had a beautiful finish, but I'm talking about like had George just been like you know maybe the the I don't want to call it average because the finish of fighter in the UFC is, is really tough, but you know your typical one two that you see in a highlight film. Yeah, you know, yeah okay, but. It was a nice elbow, and then the follow-up, and it was against a good established yeah. fighter who's yep. also bonus, you know, uh, on behalf of himself by knocking other people out. But yet you took him out. I don't know, man. That that either merited consideration or it merited Dana White sending you an envelope uh, two weeks later, or or or. or Court side at the Celtics, something dog. Hey, got to come out of there. I'll settle for just a little more respect on my name. Uh, you know, I think we're starting to get it, earn us some more big moment opportunities, like I said. And uh, I, I would say a, a Patriots, Patriots uh, sideline would be nice, but we'll have to see, man. I, I keep shouting out Bill Belichick. Hopefully, he'll hear it one of these days. You're aware Brady's gone, right? You might want to go with the Celtics <laughs> angle here. Be easy. No, but it's funny. You talk about that money, like the bonuses. I, I was talking uh, – um, so I bumped into Edelman in the gym the other day, and I was, you know, thinking, man, like, man, bitching about just money, bullshit. And, and then I'm like, uh, you know, we get fined – we get bonuses, you know, and get paid where NFL guys get fined. <laughs> you know? It's like <laughs> these guys wear the wrong set of shoes, and they're over there. All right, quick 50, see you later. It's nothing, but – we're on our way, man. It's a lot better than it was, and uh, hopefully it'll continue to get better and better for you know up and coming guys. But we're laying the forefront, and uh, and I couldn't be happier to have the opportunity in front of me to have another chance to bonus and uh, and put on a show for everybody still in quarantine. Okay, we you got the shine on your name, but we're still gonna make a big deal out of you somehow getting on that Patriots sideline due to Dana White. We got we got to push for something. Leave that up to us, though. You don't worry about it. You worry yeah. about. It. Your fighting career. Let the and internet do its thing. I, I love the you know, so you got me? Yeah, We got you, man. All right. I, I, well, tell them we're going to need three tickets then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And right. then hopefully, uh, hopefully they're smashing on one of your teams out there. I know we don't get too much love out there in Pats Nation. <laughs> hey, but let me ask you for a favor, though. Can George come too? Because you and me, Rob, fun. That's going to be fun. But George has got to come too, right? Hey, you got to have someone to, to heckle. <laughs> hey, tell me about Julian Edelman. Are you guys homies or just a nod of like one pro athlete to the next? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a it's a New England thing, man. You know, got to have respect for uh for uh title town, man. He's he's a cool dude. We just bumped into each other at the gym and uh, I told him a funny story when I bumped into him um uh, in Southie. Well, I didn't I didn't like have a conversation. I was just there. I had a fight coming up. Couldn't really get drinks. And uh, I just wanted to order some wings, some chicken wings. And uh, they told me the kitchen was closed. And go sure as shit, half hour later, who shows up? But Julian Edelman, I think Amendola, and a couple other players, right? And we're at a, a, a salty bar. They walk in, they get VIP treatment, and then on the table is about 50 buffalo wings for him and his boys. And I'm like, damn. It's just like not to hate on it, but just I need to get some respect on my name. I'll know I make it when I could show up to a place with the kitchens closed and, and get me some, you know, some damn wings. So I told him that story and then post fight he washed it and, and and just gave a shout out to the wings thing and just about coming up and trying to make it, man. And for me, it's the simple things like that. I just want wings when the kitchen's closed and I'll be happy. <laughs> I love that story. All right, goes. Um Calvin, tell us about your support system. I know when you fight, your family goes nuts. They're some of your biggest fans. They help you out a lot. But I don't hear very many people talk about that. Can you can you talk a little bit about your support system in MMA? Yeah, for sure. For me, it's it's a huge part of everything I do. And um, it, it, that's what makes it a little unfortunate. Like, Florida wasn't so bad. Because uh, when I put this whole package together, this whole team cater package, this is going to be like a lifetime thing that we look back on and see all the memories and, and where we went, where we traveled. And uh, it's it's a shame that 
that team cater couldn't come to uh, Abu Dhabi, you know, this time around, because that'd be a nice one to add to the list to this vacation package that that we're on, that we're trying to give the the followers, you know. So uh, definitely stinks that they're not gonna be able to come to Abu Dhabi, but they're a huge part of everything I do, and um, even since the day one shows, man, when you weren't getting the money for this stuff. It was the passion. It was that that crowd, that energy from the crowd, the support that you had that makes you want to keep coming back and fighting. You know, it was that energy that you feed off of. So before the money, man, it was all, you know, it's all just that energy, that raw energy. And they bring it everywhere we go. So uh, I'm very, very happy with my support system. And, and on top of that, we got it so dialed in to this point that we go out on fight weeks and, uh, you know, they hit, they hit their usually on a Saturday fight. They'll get there Monday and they'll scout out the whole area. They're real good, man. They'll hit all the food spots, like in Chicago. They hit the top three uh, recommended deep dish spots, and they hit it with ratings. They really expedite my uh, my my time out there because I only got a couple of days, you know, post fight where I can really enjoy myself. And they expedite the trip by telling me the good pizza spots to eat, the good places to visit. So uh, I I got a good reconnaissance team on fight week. They hit there Monday, and and I enjoy it post fight. Dan Ige, was that the only name that was brought in front of you for, for a fight? Uh, did they give you any others? And can you give your thoughts on him as an opponent? Yeah, tough kid, man. He got what he asked for. He called me out and uh, a couple other big guys in the in the division. And, you know, it was a cool checkpoint for my buddies. You know, they're all laughing. Like, oh, you're getting called out. It's, it's you know, it's good. It's a good thing. And, uh, yeah, I get it, you know. But, um, you know, after the fight, we, we could all chop it up. But right now I got a, a job to do, and it's Dan Ige. And, uh, you know, he's, he's done – he's done he's had to do with the last six guys, and uh, I'm looking to put a stop to that. Even though this is a different scenario of a main event, um, can you say that you hold an advantage going through that main event the first time? Like, just the walkout, when you, when you have to fight, this is all going to be a little new for Dan. Is yep. there a little bit of an advantage to having been in that situation before? Well, well, having been through it, you realize it's kind of all bullshit, you know. Um, it's it's all uh, external, and anything external is pretty much bullshit, you know. It's really the only thing that matters is internally, things that you can control, and um, the sooner you realize that, the better. So, yeah, having gone through one, uh, I'm just excited to go out, get another rep, and this time get the job done, capitalize, get the W, and, uh, and be, you know, just seeing who's ahead of me and, and hopefully be ready for something like that. All right, so let me ask you something about that. What I've heard is that, uh, you know, aside from the five rounds, there's a big spotlight on the main event guys. Now, it's different because this is the pandemic era, so I don't know what it'll be like. But what, one thing I've heard is there's a lot of responsibilities on the media side, and sometimes that can disrupt the flow of what a fighter who doesn't do as much media, you know, usually they're in the hotel, they concentrate on the weight cut, boom, boom, done. And... So then I ask, but is it that tough? You go to these medias, they give you your coffee, they tell you how great you are, and they go, it's not that. It's the fact that you have to revisit the fight and the strategy, hearing great things about the other opponent, that sometimes fighters mentally, like, that's where they exhaust themselves. Is there any truth to that? I mean, everyone's different. For me, I, I try to really not get overwhelmed with anything external. Uh, those types of things are, are part of the process. So when you sign that contract, you know what you're getting involved in, and uh, – you know, going out there and fighting in front of the world, uh, that's it's definitely no, no one's going to promote you like that. But uh, I think it's your job in order to try to do the easy promoting, which is the interviews leading up, the post-fight interviews. Some guys will go dark post-fight. And I think, you know, it's definitely, say, like the last fight with Jeremy Stevens. Yeah, maybe I had a broken nose. I'm sure I had to do some bullshit. I had to, like, you know, I, I could have found reasons to not do them. But at the same time, I'm not doing the easy part of promote myself. I just did the part where I took, a, you know, uh, I took a right hand, landed a big elbow, just trying to get my name out there. But now, uh, post fight, I think it's it's time to get on the horse now, promote what you just did, and then what you're trying to do next. So yeah, I, I always look at the media as an opportunity for me to go out there and promote myself to someone who otherwise might not know who I am, and uh, I try to look at it in that way so it's not a burden. I couldn't agree with you more. The post fight media is just as important. All right, just a couple more, Calvin, then we'll get you out of here. Um, okay, when people start to break this fight down, I know they're gonna they're gonna start with some basics. Obviously, we know you because of your striking. Of course, we know we are well rounded, but you're striking your hands. Dan comes from a wrestling background, so he's just an yeah. amazing scrambler and everything. In this last fight, Dan showed 
wow, this guy's striking and even outstriking a lot of the strikers he's faced. His, yep. his striking games become formidable. Tell the fans how your wrestling, jiu-jitsu, or your ability to scramble, how that's improved because, again, a lot of people only like to focus on your striking. Yeah, for some reason, I like to just, I don't know, I crave that shit when I'm in there. It's like um, I, I've had ideas where I'd like to maybe work a guy, take him down, show some of the things I've been working on. But, um, you know, when I get in a firefight sometimes, it, I, I, I just – yeah, it's tough to get out of that 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 zone. But uh, I, I'm a well-rounded fighter, man. And, and rather than telling these guys, man, they could all tune in. Uh, I think it's July 15th. I don't even know yet. <laughs> I think we just booked that shit last night. I agreed to it like eight. It's announced by like 12. The UFC's got to love, uh, you know, dealing with me, man. I don't take long to answer, and uh, we're usually pretty ready to go, no matter who it is. But you'll see. You'll see. Dan wants to try to imp implement that game plan game plan on me. Uh, you know, you guys, you guys might be able to see, hopefully in a five round fight, what more I can bring to the table. But for me, I'll take it where the fight goes and not force anything. So, um, yeah, I'm excited, man. People are going to learn a lot about me the more they get to see. And um, hopefully five rounds of have a, a, about 25 minutes, maybe, um, you know, to, to just see what else I can bring to the table. Do you think that your fight can maybe supersede Zombie versus Ortega or Yamir or any of these other guys that are going to try and come up for the winner of Volkanovski at Holloway? It's funny, man. I don't really give a shit about none of these guys. Like, I don't think about them like I should really. Yeah, maybe you should. I maybe should. I don't know. I'm too focused on, like, think about that, man. You spend all your energy thinking about all these other people. It's like, I just, I don't give them that energy. I don't, I just focus on. Uh, me, my fight coming up, Dan Ega. I barely even focus on Dan Ega. Shit. <laughs> I just focus on myself and uh, each session every day, man. You do that enough, it's just going to pay pay dividends, man. You do enough good things, eventually one great thing's going to happen. And uh, right now, we, we have Dan Ega, main event, Abu Dhabi. Sounds like a cool checkpoint to me. All those other guys can get it on the back end. Man, I like that. All right, that's pretty interesting. All right, we'll finish out on, on, on the fun way. Seriously, dog. So Brady's no longer with the Pats. Belichick is still there. It's a formidable franchise. Respect all the way. But what really happens this fall? In Bill Belichick, we trust, man. I don't got to say it any more than that. I mean, just, but yeah, Tom Brady ain't there. But, uh, man, that just hurts to say. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a couple things. I, I, part of me – wanted to scratch the whole season though to be honest i was like you know what you guys got gronk you guys got brady now you're gonna have to sit this season out due to the pandemic that sucks <laughs> but if i ain't gonna be bitter about it then you know in bill belichick we trust and i'm excited for the season man we're on the, we're on the next season i'm with bill belichick now we we're running it i have one last silly question you, know, you yep. see Holly Berry sending tweets to the fighters, to Dana White during performances. What one celebrity, female celebrity, that have you heard? Hey, man, I just got a tweet from Blank, and she was saying your fight was incredible. Which one would you be really stoked about? Where you would tell all your boys, check this out. Man, I tell you that I did get a good luck. Uh, I did get a good luck uh, message from Lupe Fuentes, I believe. But that was uh, that was because my buddies did that. Uh, I don't know. You pay him to do a good luck, thirty bucks, some something like that. So I got a I got a message from her, and then um, I said thanks for the message, post fight. Nothing crazier than that, but uh, yeah, just just basically that the guys were doing a gag, sent the message. So uh, maybe she's part of Team Cater now, though. Hopefully, hopefully she's one of many, and, and we get this name out here because right now. For what I've been doing, man, I'm still flying under the radar. And uh, I don't know how many more people's faces I got to elbow off to, to get noticed around here, but I'm willing to, to bleed for it. So I'm ready to go, man. Okay, I did a quick checkup here. Lupe Fuentes is the truth. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were quick, man. You sure that wasn't on recent searches? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, man. I really just opened up the laptop because – when you said it, I was like, Who, who's that? I really don't know. Yeah, uh, so that, was, that, that was pretty cool. Work. You know, even if you got to pay for it, it's kind of cool. It was yeah. a personalized message. Hey, but, make it how I can get it. But I'm going to answer the question. Come on. Before Lupe Puentes, really, who, or Puentes, who would you like, pick a celebrity from the movie world or the TV world 
that you would have wanted to get that text from uh, that you're, you know, Dana got the text from? Yeah, Haley's cool. Uh, she's a big fight fan. I know another fight fan, uh, Adriana Lima. Uh, there you go. I think, you know, growing up, cover of uh, Victoria's Secret. And, um, man, I think I fell in love at an early age. But, um, yeah, no, listen, I don't do it for the – I don't do this for the women, man. The only, only woman I do this for is my mother. And, uh, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty close to, to changing things around here. His porch is going to get a little bigger hopefully soon. Nice. That's awesome, man. We're mama's boys as well, so that's, that's great to hear you have that relationship with your mom. That's the truth, man. That's the truth. Thanks so much for the time today. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. It's, yeah. and it's a great fight you got lined up, man. Thank you, man. We'll have to get together post-fight, and uh, like we usually do, man, set it up again soon.